welcome back to my channel. Today I have a very special 14th century get ready with me planned for you. So over the past few months, we have made a smock, a kirtle, and most recently a sideless surcoat. Today I'm going to put all of those together along with my accessories. I'm going to do my hair, put on shoes, and I'm going to show you what a 14th century woman might get dressed in on a daily basis. Normally, at this time of year, as a member of the Society for Creative Anachronism, I would be weekly getting ready for some kind of event where I would get to dress up and go and play the part of a 14th century woman. However, because of the pandemic, those events have been canceled. So this is an opportunity for me to get to show you a little bit of what I do, as well as uh, put together some of the pieces that we have been working so hard on. If you've been following along with me and you've been making these pieces as I've been going, I really hope that you will uh, put the outfit together and take a picture or send it to me. Um, you'll find my contact information in the description box below. I would love to hear from you. I would love to see the things that you're making. So that being said, I guess we're gonna go ahead and get started. All right, so first things first, I'm going to go ahead and put my hair up. As you can see, I have separated into two long braids, parted down the middle, and uh, we are going to do the classic bun over the ears, typical 14th century hairstyle. I'll show you an image depiction of that right here. So um, I have some bobby pins. Um, I have these nifty little hairpins that I sometimes use. And once my hair is put up, then I will be covering it with a Brigida cap. And then later I will be pinning on a veil. But first, let's go ahead and get this hair started. So again, I have Claire, I have braided my hair down the side, um, all the way down. I've started it low. Some people tend to do these up high and wrap them around to the back. I find that I have the best luck with this if I do them up over my ear in this fashion. So. I'm gonna go ahead and get that started. We're gonna pin that up. I like to put a pin over here on this side as well. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and do the other side. And I like to crisscross them over the top. Try to make sure that I don't have my glasses on, so you'll have to forgive me. I can't see so well. Um, I'm gonna make sure that those are pretty even over the ear, and it looks like they are. I've tucked the extra tail away. I'm gonna go ahead and pin this one down. Put one more pin up here in the front. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and just tuck those tails in because they're going to be covered with that. So, there we go. Just a simple, simple wrap it over the top, right? Now, I'm going to put on my Brigida cap. So, um, as you can see, this cap is not the fancy version with the pretty stitches down the center. I uh, felt a little intimidated when I made this. I should actually make a new one. Um, but I, this one is functional, so I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Um, so let's go ahead and put this on. I'm going to make sure that the top here covers the top of the braid. That is going to help me to pin my veil on here shortly. All right, so first things first, me on the Brigida cap. See, it is crisscrossed in the back. I'm going to pull that tight, wrap it up and around, and then over the back again. Now, I find that I do struggle with these sometimes because my head, for whatever reason, is a funny shape and it doesn't necessarily like to keep caps on. Um, so, hopefully, this will stay in place um, while we uh, get the rest of this going. So, there you have it. My hair is ready. And I'm gonna go ahead and get dressed. All right, so here we are in our smock. And I'm going to go ahead and put on my stockings. Now these are silk stockings from American Duchess. I have some cotton ones in red, but I was looking for something a little bit lighter to wear today. It is the middle of the summer and it is hot. So the cotton ones are a little bit heavy. Um, 
They're a little bit more for winter wear. So, I'm going to go ahead and put on my stockings. All right, guys, now it's the time that you get to listen to me ramble through the rest of this because as I was filming, my children came home and, well, children, they're loud and it was impossible to get the rest of this filming done. So you get to listen to me ramble as I get dressed on the screen. So here I am putting on my 14th century coilanes. Um, these are not quite as long in the toe as some of the medieval depictions but I am very happy with them. They are very, very comfortable. This is my first time actually wearing them, having a reason to wear them since uh, everything was canceled this year. So this kirtle that we made in the basic kirtle video, I'm gonna link that above, it is made of cotton flannel. And I was 100% afraid that I was going to put it on and go out to take photos in this 90 degree day and that I was just going to be dying of heat. But it actually was not that bad. I was really pleasantly surprised. So the linen smock with the cotton flannel kernel over the top and then of course the linen surcoat over that was actually quite light. I really didn't have, I, now granted I did spend more of my time in the shade. I wasn't in direct sunlight, but I found that it really wasn't as, as hot as I was expecting. So that was a pleasant surprise. In order to do this lacing, I have a yarn needle that I use. I have a Victorian style bodkin specific for lacing, but it doesn't fit well through my hand sewn eyelids. And I have a yarn needle that is used for plastic canvas, so it has a nice blunted tip. And I find that that is the best option for me. It helps me to get into this fairly quickly. If I didn't have a bodkin, this would probably take 10 times as long. Often you will see some kind of aglet or point at the end of the string in order to use that for lacing. I cannot find one that fits well that I am happy with, so I have taken to using uh, this yarn needle instead. I just pack it in my kit and carry it with me anytime I go to events. So once I have tied this off, I just take the string and wrap it around my hand and create a little ball, tuck it in, and there you have it. It is time to put on the surcoat. And again, this sideless surcoat, as we made it, is made out of linen. It is very light. I am quite impressed. I do have some theories. Now, obviously, higher class women would not have worn this as, a, as an apron, but I wonder at whether or not a middle or working class woman would have worn this as an apron. It seems like the surcoat itself would be much, much easier to wash the, the mess of life off of. And I know that there are some depictions of things like midwives aprons and stuff of that nature that I would like I would like to look into recreating this year. But I wonder at how much of this could have been a thing where these would have been worn in an apron um, in an apron fashion or in, in place of an apron. Enough of my rambling. This belt here is called a demisciant belt. You see lots of depictions of them throughout the 14th and early 15th centuries. This belt was not actually intended to go with this piece, but there are a few depictions of royalty wearing the Domitian belt with a sideless surcoat. These pens here are my pomegranate pens. I had them custom made for me. My heraldry is a pomegranate and I thought that pomegranate veil pens would be a very neat little touch. A lady in the SEA, a merchant made these. Um, her company is called Good Girl Gone Bead. You can find her on Facebook. She does amazing glass work. Now, a woman in the late 13th, early 14th century would have worn a wimple as well. However, I do not like wimples. I don't like having anything up around my neck. So I have gone without, I do go without a wimple. Historically adequate, remember, historically adequate. Here I have my dressmaker sheer brooch. My persona in the SEA, I play a 14th century widow 
who is a dressmaker. Yeah, so there you have it. The completed late 13th, early to mid 14th century. I consider this a middle class or working class garb. I, will, I might wear it to court. All right, so there it is. Getting dressed in the late 13th early to mid 14th centuries. I wanted to take a few minutes to just chat with you about some really big things that we have coming up. So I'm sure that if you are a follower of any Costube personality on Instagram, you have seen the announcement about CocoVid. So CocoVid is something that we have come to put together that is a filler, I guess, filler space for the weekend of July 30th, 31st, August 1st, and 2nd. Normally, Costume College would have been held that weekend, but since it's been canceled due to the pandemic, the Costume community decided that we would get together and to put on a costuming video free-for-all. So basically what we have done is we have, I believe right now we have about 70 videos planned to come out through the course of the weekend that have to do with all areas of costuming, sewing um, costumes, making costumes, cosplay. We do have some folks from the international community who will be joining us as well. We have lots of different panels scheduled, lots of live events. We also will be hosting our very own Discord server where you can uh, meet and mingle with all of your historical costuming network. So we are very, very excited to be offering this and being able to put this together for you guys this year. So please stay tuned for more information. You will probably see a very light July from me. There will not be a lot of videos during the month of July because we, uh, I personally am prepping for that big weekend. Um, and I just don't have enough spoons in my spoon drawer to um, to release a lot of videos in the month of July. So next thing up is the 500 subscriber giveaway. I promised you guys that we would chat about this. So we are at about 440 subscribers, or I am at 440 subscribers right now on my YouTube channel. So at 500, what I would like to do is to release the second edition version of the Medieval Tailor's Assistant. We have used that book so many times going up to this point in this channel. And I know that there's probably some of some of you out there who have been following along, but can't really follow along because you don't have the book, or maybe you just want to add the book to your collection. If that is the case, then I am going to be giving it away once I reach 500 subscribers. And it's going to be very simple. We're not going to do anything um, super complicated, but um, I will announce that once we actually reach that 500 subscriber mark. So please stay tuned for more information on that. That will be coming soon, I hope. We're at 440, so we've got 60 more subscribers to go. And that's really, really exciting. I also wanted to take a few minutes to, to tell you how thankful I am that you come and visit with me every time I put out a video and that you are enjoying this and that you are um, encouraging me to continue going. It really is an inspiration and I get motivation every week when I get such wonderful comments from you and I just wanted to say thank you. I have a few things that I'm wanting to start adding to the channel possibly. I just learned that I have the ability to go ahead and start doing some live events, live broadcasts and I would like to incorporate some of those into the monthly schedule so I'm gonna be working on trying to figure that out so if you guys would like go ahead and leave a message in the comment box below letting me know what you might be interested in for the very first the very first live with Casey I'm sorry those cats you put a curtain down and the cats are like gotta run through it I don't understand they come. Okay, so that being said, if you're new to this channel and you like what you see, please click the subscribe button and the bell. I do try to release at least two videos per month, more if I can swing it. So give this video a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it. Stay safe, stay healthy, and make the most of today. I will see you next time. Bye-bye. 
Well, on you two. You wanted to cause so much trouble. Now you're just gonna sit and relax. These two troublemakers, right here. There they go. Yeah. It's hard to film when that's going on at your feet. 